Good evening. It's Wednesday, March 3, 2021, here in Cebu City. I'm Cherry Ann Lim, and this is Sunstar Tonight. Healthcare officials clarified that the first batch of Sinovac COVID-19 vaccines that arrived in Cebu yesterday are for health care workers and not local government officials. This comes after two Cebu City councillors expressed their desire to be inoculated with the newly arrived vaccines. Shari Corona reports. The Department of Health Central Visayas clarified that the first batch of donated Sinovac COVID-19 vaccines, which arrived in Cebu yesterday, are intended for healthcare workers. Officials of the local government units will not be inoculated with the newly arrived vaccines. Cebu City Councilors Joel Garganera and Dave Tumulak have expressed their willingness to be inoculated with the Sinovac vaccines tomorrow during the vaccine rollout. The two councillors reasoned out they want to increase public confidence in the vaccine. Garganera said that the response of the public to the Sinovac is low. He added the best vaccine is the one that is currently available. Meanwhile, health officials also clarified that there was no actual vaccination conducted in Lapu-Lapu City earlier and it was only a simulation program. DOH also said Lapu-Lapu City Mayor Jonard Chan did not receive the actual Sinovac vaccine during the simulation. It was just a placebo or a saline solution which has no adverse effects. Lapu-Lapu City government conducted a simulation in the entire process of the vaccination program from the registration to medical screening to counseling and actual vaccination and monitoring of the adverse effects. The city's vaccination program will have four phases. Phase 1 includes frontliners and healthcare workers. Phase 2 includes drivers of public transportation and market vendors. Then the persons with disabilities and indigents will be given the vaccine. And the members of the Philippine National Police, Bureau of Fire Protection, and the Bureau of Jail Management and Penology will also be given the vaccine. Cebu will start its vaccination rollout tomorrow. Around 600,000 doses of donated Sinovac vaccine from the People's Republic of China arrived in the country on February 28. Yesterday, 7,200 doses of CoronaVac from China arrived at the Mactan Cebu International Airport, which is intended for Vicente Soto Memorial Medical Center healthcare workers. Charlie Coronel, Sunstar Tonight. Around 4,000 doses of the AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccines are expected to arrive in the country tomorrow, March 4. Kenneth Torres reports. The Philippines is set to receive around 400,000 doses of AstraZeneca vaccines at 7.30 p.m. tomorrow, March 4. This was confirmed by presidential spokesperson Hari Ruke. The number of doses is lesser than the previously announced around 500,000 doses. The Philippines is one of the 92 low- and middle-income economies that have been granted access to donor-funded vaccines through the COVAX Facility Advanced Market Commitment. Under COVAX, up to 20% of the population of these 92 countries are targeted to be vaccinated against COVID-19. Malacanang earlier announced that the country expects 44 million doses of vaccines through COVAX. An emergency use authorization was granted for the AstraZeneca vaccine by the Food and Drug Administration on January 28, 2021. This would be the second vaccine shipment to arrive in the Philippines after the 600,000 doses of Sinovac vaccine donated by China, which arrived on February 28, 2021. Kenneth Torres, Sunstar Tonight. Sunstar Tonight will be right back after this short break. Instead of being detained, those who will be caught not wearing a face mask in Lapu-Lapu City will be fined 1,000 pesos. Chari Coronel reports.
Beginning today, those who will be caught not wearing face masks in Lapu-Lapu City will not be detained. Instead, quarantine violators will either pay the 1,000 peso fine or do community service. Lapu-Lapu City Mayor Junar Chan said this is to avoid overcrowding the detention cells of the city. Chan also said he has mandated the police and barangay officials to strictly impose the minimum health standards in their respective areas. The mayor revealed he is planning to lift the implementation of quarantine passes and number coding of vehicles as long as his constituents will adhere to the health protocols. Last week, Chan lifted the executive order temporarily suspending certain activities in the city, including the liquor ban and video key and karaoke activities. Lapu-Lapu City is under modified general community quarantine. As of February 28, the city had 733 active COVID-19 cases. Barangay Basak has the highest number of active cases among the barangays in the city. Chari Coronel, Sunstar Tonight. The Department of Education has extended the current school year to July 2021 in all public elementary and secondary schools nationwide. Kenneth Thoughts reports. The Department of Education issued an order extending the current school year to July 10, 2021 in all public elementary and secondary schools nationwide. DepEd also encouraged private schools, technical and vocational institutions, and higher education institutions, including state and local universities and colleges, offering the K-12 basic education program to implement the latest order. DepEd Order Number 012, Series of 2021, amended DepEd Order number 030, series of 2020, which had set the school year for October 5, 2020 to June 11, 2021, and DepEd Order number 007, series of 2020, which had set the school year for August 24, 2020 to April 30, 2021. Class opening was delayed to August 24, 2020, and later moved to October 5, 2020 due to the COVID 19 pandemic. Kenneth Torres, Sunstar Tonight. To raise awareness on endangered species, World Wildlife Day is celebrated today. And did you know that the Philippines has at least five endangered species? To tell us more about them, here's Tiffany Neri. March 3 is World Wildlife Day, a day for us to celebrate and bring into awareness the world's wild animals and plants. In line with this special day, we are listing down five species in the Philippines that you probably didn't know were endangered. Number one, the tamarau. The tamarau is a dwarf buffalo that lives in only one place in the world, Mindoro Island, Philippines. It's classified as critically endangered. They stand no taller than about four feet at the shoulders. In spite of being tiny, they're known to have quite a temper. Number two, the Philippine crocodile. Crocodiles are usually feared because they're known as predators. But the critically endangered Philippine crocodile is on the smaller side and said to have a diet of mostly fish, small mammals, birds, and snails. Number three, the Philippine mouse deer. The critically endangered Philippine mouse deer, also known as pilandok, is a unique creature only found in the islands of Palawan. They resemble exactly what the name describes, a mix of a mouse and a deer, but it actually doesn't belong to the deer family. Number 4. The Tarshir Tarshirs are really tiny leaping primates found mostly in Bohol, Philippines. They are easily stressed and become self-destructive when they are, so we have to be careful with dealing with them. The species is not critically endangered, but it is still threatened, so let's hope it never gets to that point. Number 5. The Philippine Forest Turtle the Philippine forest turtle, found in Palawan, is among the most critically endangered turtle species in the world. For a while, the Philippine forest turtle was believed to have been extinct, but a few specimens were found again in 2004. Unfortunately, this rediscovery brought about a negative effect as it turned poachers to a frenzy of capturing the turtles to sell as pets, traditional medicine, or even... Lastly... Did you know that 5 out of 7 sea turtle species are found in the Philippines? All these species are threatened and are classified as endangered animals in the Philippines. These endangered species have come to this point because of the habitat loss, 
poaching, human consumption, pollution, disease, and climate change occurring all around the world. Awareness is the first step to helping. Most of us don't even know the cost that nature is paying for humanity's existence. Some might even call it humanity's selfishness. So please don't forget to share this video to help spread awareness for the world's wildlife today. This is Tiffany Neri for Lifestyle on Sunstar Tonight. To get the latest, visit www.sunstar.com.ph. Follow us on our YouTube channel and official social media accounts on Twitter and Facebook. I'm Cherry Ann Lim, and this has been Sunstar Tonight. See you again tomorrow. Good night.